This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good evening. We're coming on the air a bit earlier than usual because of breaking news at this hour. A grand jury here in New York City has just handed up an indictment against former President Donald Trump, making him the first former president in U.S. history to face criminal charges. This, of course, is unprecedented. The former president accused of paying $130,000 in hush money to Stormy Daniels in the weeks before the 2016 presidential election. Again, the news just coming in moments ago, according to multiple sources, the Manhattan grand jury votes to indict Donald Trump. I want to bring in our investigative reporter, Aaron Katursky, in lower Manhattan tonight. Aaron, what have you learned? Word came down just a short while ago, David, that a grand jury that has been meeting here since January has just voted to return an indictment against former President Trump. The indictment is currently under seal, so we don't know the specific charges, but the grand jury had been hearing evidence about Trump's alleged role in that hush payment you mentioned to Stormy Daniels. Hush money by itself is not illegal. It's the way that Trump and the Trump Organization accounted for it that got the attention of the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, which called more than a half dozen witnesses over the last several weeks, including Michael Cohen, former I President I Trump's mean, one-time fixer and attorney so who wrote the $130,000 check to Stormy Daniels and said in congressional testimony and during court activity that he was directed by Trump to make that payment in order to protect Trump's election chances in 2016. We don't, again, know the specific charges because this is under seal, but falsifying business records, David, is a misdemeanor in New York. It can be bumped up to a felony if the business records were falsified in furtherance of another crime. What that crime could be, perhaps a campaign finance violation, perhaps a violation of state election law or tax law, we just don't know. But it's always been thought, David, the Manhattan District Attorney would not move forward with this unprecedented indictment of a former American president unless there were going to be felony charges. What's up, everybody? And you are listening to the best of the Media Mike radio show. I'm your host, the Media Mike Speaks, sponsored by New Justice Media, where we are the voice of the everyday citizen. The time is now 36 minutes past the hour here in the Lone Star State. So let's get to it before it's too late. All right, good people. I'm pretty sure you know this is buzzing around here. You know, think about the Trump, the Trump thing. We all know. So we're going to talk about some things here. We're going to talk about five things from the Trump indictment to take away from. So if you don't know what an indictment is, you have two jurors. So I guess uh, New York has that where you, you go before the grand jury, before you go uh, to the trial jury. And when you go before the grand jury, they have to see if there's enough evidence to be presented forward. And if it is, it comes back what is called a true bill. And if there is not enough evidence, it comes back a no bill. Now, doesn't mean that if you are no billed and they fail to indict, it does not mean that the uh, state's prosecutor cannot go forward with a trial. Yeah, yes, they can. But in this case, whatever these frivolous charges are, they, the jury, grand jury, not the trial jury, uh, the uh, grand jury came back with a true bill. So he is scheduled Trump. To appear in criminal court. Uh, and we're going to see about the arraignment. And this is coming from a spokesperson for the New York Office of Court Administration, which I'm familiar with because I lived in New York for two years. So, yeah, a lot of legal, um, you know, um, legal documents and everything and training comes out of the court administration for the state of New York. So. The grand jury's indictment and Trump's charges remain under seal. Now, here's the thing. We're going to talk about some things here. And, you know, I'm just wondering. Uh, here's the thing. People are two-faced. And and this is, and, and you'll see what I mean by this. Because I started to do a thumbnail regarding the two-faced here. Because if you saw the video, they're trying to say this is, you know, okay, breaking news. But let's get to it. The, uh, number one, the grand jury has been investigating Trump for months. Why? Because they're saying that Trump is likely to be charged with a violation of New York Penal Code 175.10, falsifying business records in the first degree. So, this is what we're talking about here. Really? Would he not be the first one to violate some type of business records? We want to look at Wall Street, but we're not going to go there. 
And they're saying it's quite serious, even if the charge itself doesn't reach the heights that some people would expect from from a former president. Really? (laughs) It's quite serious. Now, here's the thing. Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, negotiated a deal. That's what they're saying. With a porn star, Stormy Daniels, paying her $130,000 in exchange for keeping quiet about an alleged affair with Trump. And this is what we're talking about, people in America. Paying off a... You know, porn star, 130000 really, in, ex- in exchange for her silence. Are we really doing this? Really? We're talking the world of politics in the world of the rich and powerful. Now, according to sources, Cohen transferred that money to Daniels less than two weeks before the election. And then after Trump won, Trump reimbursed Cohen, including with his own personal checks. Trump has denied having an affair with Daniels, although he has admitted reimbursing Cohen for money paid to her. That's a personal account. So now the Trump's organization said that those reimbursed payments were for legal fees, which is not true. In New York, that's a felony if it was done to cover up another crime. In this case, probably the violation of campaign finance laws. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, if it was done to cover up another crime. So I guess they're saying taking a bribe. Now they're saying as a class New York, they're saying it's a class E felony, a conviction of, on falsified business records would, could come with a prison sentence up to four years. But no one really goes to prison for things like that. Now, there, there are cases, yeah, but give me a break. Now, let's get this here. Number two, Trump was asked to surrender. It's unclear if he will. Now, a spokesperson, spokesperson for Bragg issued a statement Thursday evening saying the office had contacted Trump's attorney to coordinate his surrender, unquote. Guidance will be provided with the arraignment date is selected, according to the spokesperson. <sighs> All right, people, look. We know this is ridiculous. Now, what disappoints me is small-minded people. Now, the two-faced people is one thing, because we know most people are two-faced. Um, and the small-minded people, really, they just really need to be brushed aside because they can't think as far as, as, uh, as, far as the hand in front of their face. Now, uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis said he is not going to get in this type of circus. He said this is ridiculous. Well, the politicians know. If you have half a brain of common sense, you know this is nothing but a circus. And we all know what it's about. Number three, Trump and the GOP say the indictment is political persecution. Yeah, I mean, most likely it seems that way. The former president dismissed the Manhattan's grand jury vote to indict him as political persecution and election interference in a statement on Thursday. The Democrats, quote, have lied, cheated and stolen in their obsession with trying to get Trump. But now they've done the unthinkable, indicting a completely innocent person in an act of blatant election interference. The statement from his website reads, across the board, Republicans echoed this sentiment, adding fuel to Trump's campaign narrative, uh, campaign narrative. Now, here's the thing. You know how they say, you know, when you get the publicity that you say negative, it just fuels the fire and you become more popular. This is what's really happening here. This is really happening. This is what I do believe what's really happening. Even though a lot of uh, Republicans have said this is outrageous, this is this is not making any sense. We all know what the deal is. But let's continue. Number four, Democrats and those tied to the probe say it's about accountability. Democrats also rallied around a party message, but theirs was one of the need for blind justice. Best summed up by the phrase, no one is above the law, quote. We know this except the rich and powerful. But we know this. No one is above the law and everyone has the right to a trial to prove innocence, said former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat out of California, which just in case you are the no good people, the governor of California is her nephew. Yeah. Go look that up. So anyway, a nation of law must hold the rich and powerful accountable, even when they hold high office, especially when they do. Said rep- a Republican, no, Representative mm, Adam Schiff, Democrat, California, a former impeachment manager. Now, here's the thing. No, you know what? I'm going to say I'm going to say this. Let's continue. Let's finish up with number five. This could be just the beginning of Trump's legal woes. In light of the speed and significance of this new cycle of this, this news cycle, it's worth remembering that Trump also faces scrutiny and other investigations that could lead to charges of their own. Like who doesn't? 
The Justice Department has interviewed numerous Trump allies and aides for an investigation into Trump's role in igniting the January 6th attack. Let me tell you about the January 6th attack, good people, just in case for you small minded people out there. Do you know? I'm not going to say what federal organization. You know what? I will say it. They were questioned. The FBI. They were. They were questioned. You know, they had a paid informant to start that riot. This is all documented. You can look this up. They failed to give the name of their paid informant. But they have this paid informant on video. Now they know who. Now everyone else knows. During that um, hearing. Who the paid informant was. The FBI just to fail to disclose. Or acknowledge. Who that informant was. That started. And ignited the riot. To where they could break down the barricades. Because it, 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 Trump called for a peaceful demonstration. But see, people think that they went there to do what they did. It was it was started. Now, this is a tactic that uh, the government, you know, uh, you know, not to speak ill of the dead, J. Edgar, former J. Edgar Hoover started to pay people to create chaos. So let's drop the January 6th BS. And a trove of classified documents has sparked the Justice Department to open a second investigation to Trump. Now, here's the thing. Now, I can remember back, I remember back in the mid to late 90s, then President William Jefferson Clinton came under scrutiny regarding the White House intern scandal involving Monica Lewinsky. And all the hmm, colored folk rallied behind then President Clinton. Even on the House and Senate floor, Upon threatening to impeach him. Blacks were yelling biblical scriptures. Let he who has not sinned cast the first stone. Yada, yada, yada. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes down to this, I guess they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? But we had this situation regarding a payment to a so-called call girl. And tell me what else is new. I guess you forgot Nancy Pelosi's husband befriended the so-called burglary, burglar getting into an auto accident and attempted to bribe public uh, officials, you know, a.k.a. cops, to get out of it. <laughs> oh, we don't forgot about that, huh? But, oh, we can't talk about that or even prolong uh, those stories. Mm -hmm. And you notice how convenient the indictment came down right after that tragedy in Nashville. So we all know about rainbows. And the stake they have in this. But here's the thing. We're going to let the American people look at this here. And the American split on the Trump indictment poll. Now, for those of you who are small minds, let's do the math. While 45% of Americans believe former President Donald Trump should face charges in an investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, 32% say he shouldn't have been indicted, according to a new ABC News Oh, okay. Well, huh. Get this. Another 23% of Americans say they don't know whether the nation's 45th president should face charges. So, 32% and 23% like, this is crazy. So, that's what, 55%? Uh -huh. Over 45? So, 55% out of 100, out of the nation's people, citizens, Say this is this doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. So you got fifty five percent, fifty five percent over forty five percent with a ten percent undecided. I guess um, well fifty five percent. I'm saying they're saying uh, yeah, this is this is over. That that's they. So fifty five percent have said this is stupid. They say either he shouldn't have been indicted and he shouldn't face charges. So the people have spoken. While the charges have not been announced, a Manhattan grand jury that indicted Trump had been hearing evidence in a $130,000 hush money. So that's a leak payment. Trump allegedly made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels, which we talked about. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The polls showed a split in opinions, opinions along party lines. While 88% of Democrats said Trump should face charges, go figure, 62% of Republicans said the former president should not be charged, while 60% said he should be charged, and the remainder was uncertain. 
About 47% of Americans polled said the charges are politically motivated, echoing the sentiment from the GOP figures. About 79% of Republicans hold that view. 47% of Americans polled, polled say the charges are politically motivated, while 55% combined say none of this should never happen. The American people have spoken. This is not about defending anyone here. This is about BS. We got politicians out here doing what they want to do. How many other people have done worse than this? And what? I just gave you the, I just gave you uh, the situation with Nancy Pelosi's husband. Oh, that's gone away. Burglars breaking into the home. They get called. And now he's like, oh, this is my friend. The officer going, excuse me, sir? I mean, what? He called the police. Somebody's in here. Come get me. He's about to broke my home. They get there. Is this the guy? Yeah, he's a burglar. Yeah, he's my friend. <laughs> okay. Then he getting in the auto accident saying, look at man. You know who I am? We can, uh, the cops said, nah, hey, hey, man. Hey, what you doing? We don't want to talk about that. Oh, no. But this, oh. Anyway. I wanted to go ahead and jump on this because people were egging me, you know, saying, hey, what, you, uh, what do you think about this? I think it's BS. I really do. We have more issues to deal with than something like this. This is ridiculous, outrageous, and it shows where our country is going. Everything that we have stood for or tried to stand for and believed in is being washed away. And it's sad. And if you can't see that, I don't know what to tell you. But we all know most people, in my professional opinion, are fundamentally stupid. So, you know, so what What can you say? But until next time, this is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night.